I suppose, above anything else, Martin McGuinness was a proud dairyman. And there is no doubt that his childhood and young life in the bogside formed him, shaped him, defined his character. Martin was born in 1950, and he was born into an orange discriminatory state. He, his families, his family, his kind, were regarded as second-class citizens. They endured terror. And Martin, a person of courage, chose to stand up and be counted. He chose to fight injustice. He chose to fight back. I know that he felt a very deep sense of personal responsibility to defend Derry and to defend his community. Martin joined the IRA. Martin never resiled from his ambition or his duty to defend his city. Martin felt a sense of responsibility to fight back because terror was brought to the streets of his city. In later years, Martin would show that same courage again and again, not least as chief negotiator on behalf of our political party in crafting and delivering the Good Friday Agreement and the agreements which followed. In bringing forward that work, Martin demonstrated not just his courage but his skill, his very considerable political skills, his very considerable personality, his very considerable ability to build bridges and to work with others. Martin always believed that whatever the odds, that a good outcome was possible. And I think in the course of his work, he demonstrated that to be true. As Minister for Education, Martin handled and tackled the issue of educational inequality head on when he took on the 11 plus. And in taking on the 11 plus, he took on large sections of the educational establishment and the establishment more generally. But Martin believed that every person was born equal. And Martin believed that every child deserved and must be delivered of equality of opportunity. I think it's perhaps in his role as Deputy First Minister for 10 years that Martin Starr shined most brightly in reaching not just a partnership but a deep personal friendship with the late Ian Paisley, in his work with Peter Robinson and, let it be said, Arlene Foster, Martin demonstrated, not just by words but by deeds, his intention, his ability and his resolve to build the peace. He famously met with the Queen for the first occasion. I thought they hit it off rather well and I said to him uh, at the time. He visited the Somme. I accom accompanied him on one of those uh, trips. He developed very strong personal ties and relationships with so many people from what is termed the other side of the community. And he did that work sincerely. It wasn't for show, it wasn't for headlines. He did it because he believed and knew it was the right thing to do. And all the while, Martin never lost his essential essence as an Irish Republican. His absolute commitment to Irish unity, to justice and to full democracy on the island of Ireland remained undimmed and was never dimmed by his ability to reach out the hand of friendship to the other side. So he was an international as well as a domestic figure, an outstanding statesman, a proud Republican, a worker for reconciliation, a champion of peace, an IRA volunteer, a risk taker, a hope giver. Martin was also a committed family man. He got home each and every evening that he was in the assembly in Belfast. He made it his business to do that. He was immensely proud of Fiacra and Fanula, of Grania, of Emmet, of his grandchildren and of his wider family. And Martin never missed an opportunity 
to tell you the story and to praise his clan. He loved his wife, Bernie. She was, no doubt, the centre of his world. And today we offer to her and to the family our deep condolences. We on these benches have lost not just a leader, but a friend. <clears throat> we will never see his likes again. Ni veg a Arish. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Brendan Howland.